Um, so we're just gonna have you start from the beginning. <laughs> what happened? So what you got to happened? you were five. Yes. Oh my gosh, and that's where it froze. Because listen, I was just talking. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow, when I was five, we moved to Milwaukee. And um, like I said, I'm the oldest. So I've always grown up just being a boss of everybody. I was super curious, super. I just love learning. I was a nerd from a young age, which explains my profession. But I was a little bit sneaky. You know, I liked, I was curious. My mama had rules. Like that's, I grew up in a time where your mama did not play with you. And we were, I was not her little friend. You know, mm -hmm. she was my mama and I was a kid. And um I would say I was like really good. Like I was really good by the book, followed all the rules until I got to, uh, I want to say 14. Whew. And this is why I'd be lecturing all the little girls like, listen, leave these boys alone. They don't like you. They don't love you. They only got one thing on their mind because it's the truth. They just trying to get off whatever they can get off. And, you know, I had always grown up with friends that were boys because girls for some reason did not like me growing up. And I just would hang with all the boys. And I and I didn't have like my first little boyfriend and you know, your little boyfriend until I was 14. Oh, and I just knew I was in love. I just knew it because I mean I've been in love for 14 years, right? So this is it, right? This is it. You know, he get my little he bought my little Air Max, bought my Nautica coat, and I was like, okay. Yeah, you know, I love you, you know. And you know, um, when you think you know something, you was doing stuff you weren't supposed to be doing, which is exactly what I was doing. I was definitely doing stuff I was not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'll, I think I, as a teenager, we feel we're invincible and we're not, and we're so naive. We don't know. We don't know what we know. We got the world telling us things and that was me. So my mom, she was a single mom. She worked two jobs. That left plenty of opportunity for me mm -hmm. to go and do, I mean, like I literally would sneak out my bedroom. <laughs> window and make it around the corner because he lived down the street at the time and you know just convenient and access so I my mom did put me on birth control and I felt like I was safe then but what had happened was so I was actually bust out to the suburbs and this is before graduating from North Division I had actually been going to school in the suburbs from fourth grade until 10th grade when I got kicked out for fighting so yeah, I know. Oh, wow. I got. <clears throat> Listen, yeah. you was out there cutting up in the verse. I was. I had, I mean, like I was doing the whole anger management thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just me and my me and my sister. We grew up with a whole bunch of boys, and then, um, as good as I look now, I think I looked the same then. I just didn't know it then because you know I had so many people tell me I was ugly and you know I sound like a dude. I look like a dude, and I wasn't. I was skinny, like no booty no boobs just skinny and everybody loved him a thick girl and I just I was like dear god I want to be thick you know that's that, those <laughs> that was my I... same prayer <laughs> now look at me <laughs> Ooh, Jesus right I'm up here like I don't want it you? god <laughs> but you know so like growing up and during that you know I'm dark skinned so it's the whole light skin dark skin thing that was still going on and this dude you know he made me feel like I was so in love and um but I got kicked out of high school for fighting because I, I would fight too. Um, not all the time. Like I, I, I had like basically straight A's, but I wasn't the one to play with. So mm -hmm. I kicked out of school and that's how I ended up at like North Division. So in between that time and um, I got kicked out of school my sophomore year, second semester. So it was like April. Um, and it, and no school would allow me to come into the school. And for some reason, I can't remember why, my mom decided she's gonna leave Milwaukee and they're gonna move. Well, depending on the state that you live in, some states follow the district you were in before their rules. So we ended up in Hickman, Kentucky, where I lived for about six months of my life um, because I got expelled for a year and a half. So my little boo and boyfriend is back up in Milwaukee. Now I'm in Hickman, Kentucky, which sounds exactly like it is like there's no street lights everybody I'm pretty sure is my cousin so when people are like oh I like you I'm like we're related I know we are so no we, we can't like each other um so I went um I wasn't able to go to school down there because they were like well we're going to honor this expulsion and keep in mind I love learning I'm a nerd and I'm like but my grades even though I got into a fight my grades I wanted to graduate on time because I'm class of 01 I wanted to graduate with my class so MPS said I could come up here for you know I could start 
in the next semester. So it would have been my second semester of my junior. So I was out of school for an entire year. Wow. And my um and then so I'm back up here with my little book because we would write letters. Now this is I have a cell phone because that wasn't in that time. And we would write letters in the mail, you know, make sure I have my little stamps. You know, I love him. He loved me. Who won't come back best. So I'm living with my cousins. Um and then I'm going to North Division. And we were, now I have been on a depo shot. And if you read the package insert, it says, you know, it may take a, up to 18 months to get pregnant. So that's what I had thought in my head. I always thought I was smarter than everything else that was there. So um, I looked and I was like, I ain't pregnant. Oh my gosh. I was pregnant. I was, cause I was just like, I was having morning sickness and I, I was going to summer school. I, I'm like, I don't know what's, I'm like, I keep feeling sick every morning. And I remember my, uh, my son's uh, grandma was like, you might be pregnant. I was like, no, I'm not. I was in such a denial because I was like, I'm up here supposed to be going to school. This is like ruining everything. That's exactly mm-hmm. how I felt. Like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to be doing right now? So I didn't tell my mama because my mama, keep in mind, she lived in Kentucky and she would come up to Milwaukee sometimes, but my younger siblings were still down there with her. And I'm up here 16. At, no, at the time I, I had turned 17. My senior year, I'm thinking I'm grown. Now I'm pregnant. I'm like, how am I going to tell her? I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh. I was, I think that was like the absolute scariest thing because I told you my mom didn't play. I'm like, man, how am I going to tell her I'm pregnant? And I can't remember how I told her, but she was like, I'm not, she was like, you know what? Your grandma had a baby when she was 17 and your other grandma had a baby when she was 17. You'll be fine. And I think that like took like this big weight off my shoulders because, you know, I was like, dang, I felt like I had disappointed her and I didn't want to disappoint her. And I didn't want to like disappoint myself. And it, I think it was like shortly, like maybe this was like two years about after when my grandma was like, you going to have a baby or you ain't going to be nothing. Like I, like these are words that appear. So you're like, dang, this, this is happening. I'm about, to, it's coming true. What she already said, I ain't going to be ish. And I'm, you know, I'm about to have a baby. And I like felt like I needed to plan my life at that moment, like I already had plans and big goals. Like I was gonna be part of Destiny's Child when they kicked out, <laughs> you know, Latoya and Latavia, but God had other plans and that, that's not what had happened. So I uh, had to go back to the drawing board and I just was like super serious. I didn't, I, it was definitely, I would say hard um, and probably the scariest because like I'm, I'm a kid and I gotta have this whole kid. This is a whole other human. That I need to take care of and make sure they don't die, that they eat. And I still got finished high school. So um, at the time I'm at North Division. Now keep in mind I had been removed from MPS from fourth to 10th grade. I don't, I don't know everything about how schools click up and what's going on, what's the rules. So I have been in the suburbs and now I'm at North Division walking through metal detectors, metal detectors. We didn't have that, even though we needed it out there in the suburbs, y'all. Um, they I'm like what do we do how do we get into the school like I was so clueless and I was so um you know people used to say like I talked white and I was so proper and I was so serious about my schoolwork so I was always super super serious about my schoolwork so when I after my mama was like okay you're gonna be fine I'm not like horribly disappointed in you and I hate you I was like oh my gosh that's all I needed and I was like that's what everybody else thought so I'm going to make stuff happen. You don't have to believe me. I'm going to make it happen. So keep in mind, I've been out of school for a whole year. I did take some summer school classes. And because I did so well my freshman year and sophomore year, um, until I got kicked out, I, my grades my grades are always good. I just needed to get the credit. So I was just filling in with stuff. And um, when I got to North Division, I was number two when I first came in and quickly became <clears throat> number one. Um, and gra- end up graduating in valedictorian. Now, the crazy thing about that is there are other people there that would be pregnant or got pregnant, and they would just disappear, and they wouldn't come. I remember the assistant principal, like, asking me, why are you still here? And I was like, because, I, I mean, I'm pregnant, but I still, I got homework to do. I had a, I had a whole scholarship awards thing planned for, um, like, the week. Like, I had my son March 1st, and that week before, I remember, like, the week, he was due March 7th, but March 1st is when I had him and the week before I was just like oh I'm gonna make it I was planning stuff y'all like I had a scholarship award I'm gonna go to miss the whole scholarship award because I ended up going into labor that night uh, there was like uh, oh my gosh I was just so irritated because I'm like you weren't supposed to come into the 
and to the seventh. And, you know, there's definitely some judgment and bad, you know, bad vibes you get from people. Because I remember when I was in the hospital and I had him, you know, they're already looking at your chart and they're like, oh, she's 17. She's just out here like everybody else. And I just remember the nurse is like, oh, your baby is six pounds, 16 ounces. And I was like, so he's seven pounds. And, you know, they don't be liking when you make them feel dumb. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. I, I mean, like, I, I know I'm here in this situation, but um, don't count, don't count me out and don't think I'm dumb and don't think I'm just, I'm not that person. So, and, and I think, I think back to like, cause my son, he never understands. <laughs> I'm like, at that time, there were so so many different thoughts going through my head and options that I thought I could have had. Like I really could have had an abortion and nobody would have been like, you know, that was the wrong idea. I mean, wrong choice. Um, I could have done that. I could have had given them up for adoption. I was like, okay, nope. I have this strong belief that, you know, God set me up for this. Not like he didn't set me up. Like I had to do some work for this to happen, but God created this series of events for a reason. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna deal with it. And plus I was scared that like, if I did do any of those things, when I did want to have a baby, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to have a baby. So these, this is my 17 year old mind thinking of these things. Um, so I went to school every day. I remember slipping in the snow. I mean, when like, you were wow. pregnant? Yes, oh my gosh. I went to school every day on a bus. Remember the one express? Yeah. One came down, that yeah. was my mother to catch down. Got off on 22nd Street, catch the 20, I mean, not 22nd, on Fond du Lac at uh, Center, catch Got the 20 down, 22, down. yes. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> but I didn't miss any school. Mm. And um, and for me, I always felt like, I, I feel like I'm God's favorite. Like God may not have favorites, but if God did have favorites, I would be on the favorite list because I just remember a teacher once like remember i'm just trying to get my credits now i just need the credits because i have the required courses i was the only one at north in my senior class that didn't have to take the english proficiency or the math proficiency you know like i had my stuff it was never about me being intelligent and i think sometimes people um judge and put you in this group and like oh my gosh she's dumb she's just like no I, was, I thought i was in love and you know i didn't put the math together that you know that depo 18 month thing, that may not work for right. everybody. Well, I, I ain't know. I may have miscalculated. <laughs> I just <laughs> made an error in my numbers. Right. <laughs> I paired the one and I should have <laughs> it. You know, like. Right. I should have added two. Exactly. Right. I thought I, I wasn't ovulating. Know that. Okay, that's what it really comes down to. I thought that I was not ovulating. And upon further review. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, oh so I do remember. So I'm now. Um, I do remember it was somebody in my class that was like, how is she valedictorian? Is she pregnant? I mean, like you just, there's so many things that people, I don't think people knew that I heard or people told me that I didn't ask, like stuff would always come to me. And I'm like, but somebody's like, why is she, how is she valedictorian? And it was, it was a great question. I'm like, how am I valedictorian and you're not? Cause yes, I, I, at the time yeah. I graduated, Shame on you. I, had, right. you know, I had a three month old son and mm. you don't, you don't have the same struggle or the same issues so it's not like nobody handed it out to me I was busting my butt all the time so I knew I was going to go to college I always had the plan of going to college and I didn't quite know where I wanted to go to because we already look Destiny's Child is off the table for right now so <laughs> I didn't know no, no right so um I had saw um <laughs> My nursing instructor, we had we had um, a nursing program and a dental program at North Division. And oh, yeah, so really? I didn't know that either. I never yeah. knew that. Wow. So Is that did, still a thing? I'm not sure, but I know that at the time it, when I graduated in 01, it was. And you could graduate and become a, and have a dental assistant certification and go out wow. and work. Or you um, graduate and you have a nursing assistant certification and go out and work. So, um, hmm. I thought I wanted to be a dentist. I don't like mouths or spit. So I went the nursing route and we had a black, a black nurse, a black registered nurse. Now I had never, ever seen a black nurse growing up. We used to go to the, I think it was called the black old building or something like that, where they had a doctor's office in. I never seen a black nurse. I never seen a black mm -hmm. doctor. So that I was like, oh, I was like, wow, this is a whole black nurse for me to, to model after. And I thought she was super cool. She's actually my best friend's mom. Um, but at the time, you know, I'm like, oh, she a black nurse. I think I can do this. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a planner for my life. So 
I wanted to um, do something that I thought could make money. And I didn't want to be in school for a long time because um, I had a, a kid and um, I didn't have any other real desires. I thought I wanted to be a psychiatrist, but that was 12 years of school. And when you were a senior in high school and somebody tells you, oh, you just got to go to school for 12 years. It's like, yeah, you and know you what? And you just did 12. Had... You literally right. just did 12. So you're like, oh, no. <laughs> So I did twelve um, years later, you like too. I could have been. Get it in but, day. Like everything I did was a matter of like how can I get the most out of my time and make the most money. So um I I was a nursing assistant when I graduated, I was able to get a CNA job, which was cool because you know, you're not making minimum wage. I had worked at Burger King and I know what minimum wage was. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm above minimum wage, but I'm still, I still felt poor. I mean, I was, I went and got food stamps. I went and got the daycare because. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. I figured, <laughs> there we go. Keep going, huh? I was going to say, my long-term plan did not involve the system. So, um, the, I would say like it was just scary going to college because I'm the first in the family and everybody that I saw that went to school came back like after a year mm -hmm. and these people didn't have kids so you know I'm trying to I can't it was some school and oh it was like some HBCU that everybody went to and I'm like everybody rust rust college rust, or rust yeah. university oh my gosh and everybody went there came back like everybody knew if that's all I knew so I'm like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was on this island by myself. I didn't have anybody telling me like, this is the way you go. This is the way you don't go. Do this and do that. So I was always like um, blessed with, I didn't have to really study hard. So when I went through nursing school, I had, um, I went to end up on At least this one is still going. I don't know if it's us or what. And it only do this here. Because when I'm at home, this never does this. Well, because we're on a different Wi-Fi. Okay, so does that mean that it's her that time? Yeah, I think it was her that time. Okay. All right. So we're definitely editing this one. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh no. Getting kicked off here. Well, you know, every time we have the best guests, will things to happen. And this is what goes on. All right, so we're gonna give her a moment to hop back yes. on. Oh, that's wow. amazing. There she is. Yay. Right. A definitely a dope story. Listen. All right, listen. Oh no, maybe it's the rain. I'm not sure. I'm not it, sure what's going on. You know what? It don't even matter. It, listen. Because we just gonna edit. We we don't edit. <laughs> that's all. We just gonna edit and that's it. Don't you <laughs> listen? I'm like, huh, right in the story. Okay, so you had got your CNA. So oh, what school did you go to? What college? Um, I went to Carter Stretch. Okay, okay. Yeah, and they had an associate's degree program and they didn't have a wait list. And I got like a, I had a scholarship. I can't remember if it was half scholarship. I just had to like keep my GPA um, a 3.0 or above. And I was like, oh, so I literally kept it at like a little bit above 3.0. Um, this is 3.01. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I think I graduated with my associates. I had 3.2 okay. uh, because I just did what I needed to do. And um, when I got my associates, I was like, okay. I, I, it, the craziest thing is like I told you, I had got my food stamps and my daycare. And I remember when you finished nursing school, they let you um, apply for a job ahead of time. So it was December. 
and I, I had got a job. I remember my first job at St. Joe's. I was making $20.50 an hour, but it wasn't going to be until January. And I was so excited, right? So, you know, you have, you have to do your reviews. And I go down to the, you know, the elite building welfare mm -hmm. office. And this lady at the front desk is the absolute rudest person I've ever met. Acting like I'm trying to scam the system. Because I was like, I didn't understand, like, how are you cutting my stuff off in December? And I don't graduate. I mean, I don't, I don't start this job until January. And she just had like the nasty, I can see her face. I don't know her name, but I was just, I told myself, I'm about to be making more money than you. I'm not going to worry about it. God going to figure it out. Now, my mama, she had came up for my graduation. I literally had enough food in the refrigerator for my mm -hmm. son. Like I had it all calculated. Like I ain't got to eat that much, but I made sure he eat. And she came, got her, got me a meat deal. Mm -hmm. um, and it all worked, it all worked out. And I, I was happy working as a nurse. I was like, okay, I'm making more money than anybody I know. I'm 20. I can push morphine, but I can't buy any alcohol. Like these are the things, these are the things that went through my head. Um, and we're gonna make it. And um I had this whole intention of never um going back to school because I'm like, oh, I make good money. Why do I need That's to get awesome. I'm like, I'm never going back. I made it. Yeah. Right. I made it. Right. So I'm done. I didn't want to go into management and I'm like, this twenty dollars and fifty cents. Like I felt I was the rich person in my family. That's how I felt at the time. And um, it wasn't until I, I, I had been working for a while and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, probably, I'm gonna go back and get my bachelor's because I know like if I wanna get my master's in something to do something more higher level, I'm gonna need to get this bachelor's anyhow. So my son has been surviving me through PA school. My son was like my kid that was with me through every school that I went through, uh, through every degree. Um, and I was like, okay. So I went back and got my bachelor's finished that in 2008. Now, at this time, I, I felt like I had a little bit more structure in life because remember I had like plans. So when I graduated my nursing degree, I was like, I got a before 30 plan. And my before 30 plan involved me getting married, getting a house, getting my master's degree and having a kid, you know, a kid. And you know, God be funny, God be playing. <laughs> so I did get married um, and I ended up with two kids. And then <laughs> I, I did get my master's. I did have a house. And um, now the only reason I got my bachelor's is because I knew I wanted to do something else. And at the time I was considering medical school and I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to end up divorced because when I'm studying, I'd be like so focused. And then when you are mom and you're studying, you got to like focus here, feed the kids. Now I'm sleeping, you know, like it's a lot going on there. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to end up divorced. Well, you know, Fast forward, how God be playing it out. I ended up divorced anyway. <laughs> and um, um, I didn't but know you I got were my... married before. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm hmm. So, yeah, for I did eight years. Wow. Uh -oh. Wow. Yeah. It's not uh -oh. a sentence. Right. right. You did make it sound like a bit. I did eight years. Did about eight. Yep. No. I call it my rough draft. The rough draft. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, you live, you learn, you get young. And my advice on that is like, don't ever marry the rebound person. Yeah. That's just the truth. Um, mm -hmm. Because, and, and don't try to make people fit inside your goals. Because remember, my whole thing was I had a before 30 plan. Yeah. And like, oh, you fit in this plan here, in this plan here. And you don't take the time to get to know anybody. I'm too focused on accomplishing all my other goals. And and that's, that's what happened. And then... Um, Let's see, where am I at now? Okay, so I got my master's. And the crazy thing about when I got my master's degree is I literally, and I, when I look back now, I know it was anxiety, but I thought the world was going to end because I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody with a master's degree. Like nobody that I knew where they could tell me like, yeah, we went to school and we, like, I didn't know anybody. So I'm like, what's normal for our, our some of our peers or our white counterparts they like this is nothing to them and I was like oh my gosh this is such a big deal like how what am I going to do so when I went through PA school I had I was only one of my class with kids and then I had twins that Wait, were one PA when I started yeah, I was that, explain to everybody is what that, PA is, is. Position oh yeah happy yeah. PA week we are still in PA week yes. so PAs physician assistants or physician associates we um are licensed medical providers we we do I always say like I do almost everything like I write orders I see my own patients I write prescriptions I order tests interpret tests I got a white coat many times people come see me and they think I'm the the medical doctor and it's it's totally separate we are all master's degree trained but um you know people just don't know 
And many, I'm always trying to recruit and get more people of color into the field because in Wisconsin, less than 1% of the PAs are black. And then if you go across the country, only three about, about three or 4% of the PAs are black. Mm -hmm. And, you know, PAs are, we're changing how medicine works. We've been around since 1965, 67 is the first class they graduated. And that's what a PA does. And I had actually never heard of a PA until I had been working as a nurse in the ER. And I remember I was working at St. Joe's and this, and this one PA was like, oh, you should look into being a PA. And I had my mind set in a whole different plan. And I, and I hope people get this from like, you can have all the plans in the world and God gonna have a whole different path. And maybe the vision that he provided where you see, see the end goal, that's probably what he wants you to have, but the route may not be how mm. you've already mapped it out. Mm. So I thought oh, I was yeah. gonna be, <laughs> thought I was gonna be a nurse anesthetist, went to, and that's a nurse that does anesthesia that you have to get a master's for. Cause keep in mind, that's the only reason I got my bachelor's is to get something else. So we had X'd out, we X'd out medical school. Listen, it out. Listen, I'm just going to get this degree real quick Listen, so I can get this yeah. other one. Like, exactly. What? Exactly. That was the whole reason. Cause I didn't, I didn't that's use funny. it for, it didn't change. It didn't change anything that I was doing. So I, um, we are, we crossed the, I'm not going to be a doctor bridge. And then um, I was like, okay, nurse anesthesia. So I worked in the ICU, got some experience, and then went to go shadow a nurse anesthetist. And to me, it was just a very boring job. I'm, I'm a busybody. I need to be doing something I like learning and doing different things. And I had to go back to the drawing board. So when I, um, now, when I was figuring this out, out, that's when I was pregnant with the twins, put on bed rest because all my plans didn't want to work Wait, out. Wait, there's put, twins? Whoa. Oh yeah, I have twins. They're 14 now. So they survived all this. <laughs> uh, Boys, girls, yeah. go to it, girls. They are identical it, twin girls, girls who are, I, I think this is what had happened. So remember I told you, my before 30 <laughs> plan, I wanted a kid. And I think God was really going to give me a girl. And then God was like, wait, hold up. It's just too much. We already put all this in one person. Let's not do that again. It's a little bit too much. And like each of them are me. Like one is, <laughs> one is like. Make split. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> and so it's me. done. <laughs> They both have personality. They're super fun. They um they're me. It's a you know, Aww. they're they're the two, 2021 versions of like if I had as much confidence in myself as mm. they did at their age. Like my daughter they was like, Mom, you see my nose? It's like basically perfect. I was like, you know, mm. you're right. It is perfect. Right. He was like, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> you're beautiful. What yes, can I is. say? <laughs> I'm gonna hype you up. Like, let me hey. like I'm gonna gas you. Like, yeah, that's yeah, yes. it is perfect. Couldn't so, be any um, better. <laughs> but yeah. that's that I'm sure that it's had to touch heart strings because that is like empowering like you recognize your beauty I wish mm -hmm. I could have had that come man up. that's what I I wish I could go back to when I was 14 because I was looking at those pictures I was like first of all I look the same and I am fine and fly so all those people y'all were just haters and and I don't know why like you didn't even have to hate me exactly I wasn't even ugly it wasn't even necessary it wasn't <laughs> Uh, you get hate me now. <laughs> you gotta run it back. <laughs> right. You gotta run it back mm -hmm. just a little bit. Back then, y'all didn't want me. It's the intermissions for me on this show, honey. It's the so intermission. Man, we got a song for everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but okay, so you were. So, um, you did not so I, I went to PA school. Yes, I went to PA school. I'm the only one of my class of kids, and I definitely thought the world was going to end because now the bachelor's degree didn't scare me that much. And it's probably because I was pregnant with the twins and my hormones and my brain weren't connected. But when I got my master's, I was like, oh my gosh, I've reached these goals at 20. So I was 27. I reached these goals at 27. I definitely got my before 30 plan. And then I like, I'm like, okay, because this is how we're going to get to pageantry because um, I lived this whole life of thinking like you needed to be perfect. So mm. in between me getting my master's um, and I would say, in between me doing that and my first pageant. That would have been, I graduated in 2011 from um, Marquette. And then- I met you because there was a session. So we too went to Marquette. <laughs> and because when you said you were a PA, I'm like, I've only ever met one black PA. There was a session at Marquette and they called all the black graduates there to do a, what do you call those, those sessions? Where they- um. Darn it. What do you, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, where they're asking the about your, they're asking you about your alumni? experience. Yeah, they call hmm. all the black alumni, but it was from various years. So mm -hmm. There were some people that were, you know, after me, with me, above me. 
and they they were asking um, about our black experience at Marquette. And I'm pretty sure that you were there. This was a long time ago, maybe like yeah. eight, nine years. I don't know. But you, I remember you talking so passionately about being a PA. And I remember because I wrote it down because I had never seen a black PA. And I was like, I need to look into this. Not that mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm not in, in medicine. I'm not in nursing, none of that. But it was just my brain wanting mm -hmm. to know, right? Because I just need to understand stuff and then move on. But I was just like, dang that's so dope like I met a black PA today <laughs> you know hey, hey, I mean there's by the time I graduated from Marquette's PA program I was black person number five and I counted because we were in 10th class and oh I was God. black person number five so I was the only black person in my class that graduated there was a black guy that started when I started but after I want to say the first semester, if you look pull up, I was like, y'all see, I don't know where is he at. Yay. And then yeah, we had look like, to your right because right. he was gone. Because in my research, I was like, now how much do, black, do PAs make? <laughs> Syria. That's really what I was doing. If you really want to know, yeah, me, I mean, I was, that's, I was still trying to figure out if I was going to go to grad school at that point. So I was like, let me just see because you had gave us such a rundown because we were like, so tell us more about this first of all because <laughs> I think you may have had on your white coat and we were like, yes, doctor. Oh wow. <laughs> I have to remember the moment. panel. I know. And it's, it, was, it and wasn't crazy. a panel. It was like a session, like a, what do you call those? Um, like a workshop? Like, like an a, information session? Not an I don't information know. session. What is it called? Like a conversation? Like, a study, like when you're doing oh. one of those like studies, but it's like a group. What's the word? Come on. I know my listeners going to be like, oh, like a think tank. Kind of like a think tank. There's another word for it. But yeah, yes, we get it close. We're going to close it. We're going to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, <laughs> but they were looking for alumni to understand what they can do to be, you know, more inclusive of their Black students. So we were coming to share our Black experience. Mm. And I've done too many things. I was going to say, you've done, that was this. <laughs> that was a sprinkle in the things that you have done since then. But I remember because I remember writing it down because I was like, okay, I need to learn more about this and I need to figure out how much money she makes. <laughs> But don't we all do that? Cause yeah. that's what I was like, okay, Listen, what they make? Yeah, I was still in my twenties at that time, so I'm trying to figure out what kind of person do I want to be. You know. Yeah. I and, and I've learned because, you know, when you get exposed mm -hmm. to things, right, then you understand your options. So for me, it was just about learning because there were so many Black people there that did things that I had never heard of. Mm -hmm. When you ask and kids what they want to be, they'd be like nurse, doctor, doctor. lawyer, yeah. accountant, firefighter, policeman. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's basically that's all we were. I, I mean, I remember at North Division, we had a um fire fire people come to and try and recruit us, and that's all I knew. That's all yeah. I knew about medicine. So I'm always trying to get people to understand that black people, we need to get into healthcare because it, um, we save each other. So yes. when we see somebody like us, we can we can get through to them. There's more tr trust that's built up quicker, and um there's so many different avenues. So we're only sold. I just remember only being told nurse and doctor. That's all I knew. There's PAs, respiratory therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, audiology. Nobody talks to us about these. Nobody's coming to our schools telling us about these. So yes, I'm definitely passionate about that. So, um, but so I got my master's and then, oh, so between that time, so 2011, now you gotta remember I'm slowing down because I made all my goals. Now I gotta slow down to actually see who I'm living with. Like, oh. <laughs> Who's my husband? <laughs> Listen, now, now what have I done here? <laughs> what did you do? You know, no, no. But like, I mean, it's that I, I'm, I'm a big advocate. I believe people shouldn't get married until their 30s. Like, so you know, so you can live life wild out a little bit. Be sure that this is the route that you want to go. Well, Chanel, That's my personal right, thing. right, we made it. <laughs> Because the second time I got married, I was at like 30. How old was I last year? I'm 38 now. So the 30, I was 37. So yeah. Um, okay, well, we were almost there. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. There. So, um, but back to the gap. <laughs> so in that time, lots of growing up in adulting in 2014, my mom passed. And that was, that was rough. And it was rough from, uh, I have like a weird brain because when you work in healthcare, I've had a patient once tell me like, y'all like Vietnam, Vietnam vets, like things that should like really traumatize. be crazy to see and traumatize and y'all so desensitized. And I ain't never think about that. But like my mom, she had cancer. So mm -hmm. I was, it wasn't like I was glad that she passed. I was glad she wasn't suffering anymore, but it's still, you know, it hurt your feelings and it's a big part of your life. And she 
I mean, I miss her all the time. But in 2014, when my mom passed, she's only 53. Wow. And oh at my the God. Time, and at the time, you're like, wow. it just made me realize like, oh my gosh, life is short. And I really like got on this whole pause of like, okay, I'm doing all these things, but why am I doing these things? Like, what's the bigger, bigger purpose? Because I feel like some of my path was laid out for me. And yes, I wanted, I was chasing how much money can I make and live a certain lifestyle, meaning like I didn't want to be poor because I grew up poor. Um, and I didn't ever have a real time to like mature and figure myself out. I had been in relationship with somebody, with somebody from 14 through all of my like life. I never had like a moment where I was just like, what do I couldn't tell y'all what I like when I was at that time. So this made me really like take inventory on my life and what was important and what was valuable and what was real joy and real happiness. And where did I want to see myself in the future? Not just a matter of like getting goals, you know, crushing down goals, but I wanted to do things that actually made me happy. I wanted to feel like I knew myself. I wanted to be able to confidently tell you what it is I want, what I like, and not like be stuck in this cycle of people pleasing and making sure everybody else around me good and I'm not good and just feel like I'm down on the inside. So after the year after my mom passed and I got divorced and Wow, with that, that next year you got divorced after your mom passed? That's a lot mm -hmm. on your plate. So are, lot, are you but, saying that that your mom almost like started this, right? Or or at least you experiencing her Confirmed, death? confirmed it. Because, you know, confirmed. I think sometimes we stay in things just to fit the picture. Yeah, like absolutely. We, it, it, it looks good on paper. It looks good on social media. And, but the things that really matter, you never got to the root of root of them you don't you didn't like I didn't really even know myself before I got married like mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted on the outside but I never like did any of that inside work like ambition I didn't have to find that I was I've always had that but like confidence self-love self-value and worth and what's okay and what's not okay and what is really important I never really took the time to figure it out because I was never really by myself um so when I, I was like, okay, this, I was not happy. I, it was something that I wanted and we made it happen um, because I didn't want to wake up one day when I'm like 50 and be like, oh my gosh, we just stayed together for the kids and I still don't like you. Mm -hmm. That's all my good prom years gone. Y'all like, oh. you took my best years. My best <laughs> years. <laughs> and I think that's okay. I think that uh, people, people need to know that like that is totally fine. Sometimes things don't work out and um you're not it's not because you're a bad person it's just there's so much life out there and it, it, there's probably people that need to know like oh you can still get remarried afterwards I mean I got I mean a black educated sexy husband so yeah. I'm like oh okay it worked out listen look at God <laughs> look at God <laughs> want to do it do do do? but now at this time I have three kids and so there's a healing process because I mean mm. you, you there's loss so there's loss of you know, um, my mom, there's loss of um, a marriage and like me really just having to sort things out in my life. So I can't remember how I, I, I started joining things. So I started joining, I joined the Milwaukee Urban League Young Professionals because I didn't do any of this stuff. I'm like, there's this whole community of Black people yeah. that I know nothing about outside of North Division because now I'm living in Franklin and there's no, there's just there's nobody out there, <laughs> nothing's happening. So I'm coming to the city, I'm doing some community service, I'm working on me, I'm having my fun, figuring my life out, myself out, what I like, what I don't like, um, and being a mom and working. So I literally joined a pack, oh, I would do fashion shows. So that's the other thing I did. I just did fashion shows in Milwaukee. Y'all couldn't pay me to do a fashion show right now, but <laughs> I did fashion shows. <laughs> My feet can't handle it, y'all. I used to wear heels, and these 38-year-old feet just, ugh, they hate on you. But um, so one of the girls that I modeled with, she did pageants. And I was like, I thought you had to, like, be super young to do a pageant. I had never seen anybody from a pageant. Now, keep in mind, I'm inner city Milwaukee. What pageant people do we know? Nobody that did a pageant went to North Division. We know man pageant person. Man. Not man one. Not man. 
So we went to, I mean, so I applied and I'm thinking because in my head I have what's called pageant people. This is what I think pageant girls are. And this is what pageant girls look like. Pageant girls are pretty much perfect. I, I'm like, I had a, a baby when I was in high school. I can't be a pageant girl. Um, I need pageant hair, but I keep dying my hair. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have pageant hair. But I'm like, I'm gonna fill out this application. I'm sure they're not gonna pick me and we're gonna go. So I do the Miss United States pageant and um it's the miss woman united states that's what it was 2017 miss woman wisconsin united states and they i i get the title and i'm like oh okay let me figure this out because <laughs> i'm from the hood i'm rough wow. around the edges i had they had me clean up my social media because these are in the thing <laughs> Oh my gosh, because let me tell you. Let that me tell made you. me I'm sorry. I just thought about what our best is Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't wait yeah. to hear what was on your look. Our friends. Oh, my, this, I, oh my god. I I'm I would like um I would put stuff up and I definitely <laughs> spoke my mind and I would tag people and joke and stuff but I would do a lot of a lot of cussing writing cussing <laughs> I would be about to fight people and tag them in the post like social media was oh I was bad I was bad sometimes I look at those memories that Facebook shows and I'm like who was she what who said that who said that who said that who said that, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> that to her that is so funny but i learned a lot of things right so i'm with these two girls who are like they do pageants and they're the directors and they have what i would consider they're like my pageant fairy godmothers because mm -hmm. listen i already had something like look i'm grown i'm from the hood i'm like a little rough around the edges i'm personable and i look excellent on paper so like i know i can do this but i really didn't know what i was doing so i'm i'm still figuring out myself and what i like and i'm like i like pageants this is way better than doing the modeling um so let's do the pageants let me go to pinterest youtube instagram whatever it is to figure out what what i need to do oh let me get pageant here so man bam i got my sew in pageant here flowing and then I was like, oh, I need a dress and I need to come up with like a platform and it was like, oh, mental health is a good platform because everybody has this. But the point was, I was just trying to fit the pageant role <laughs> and it wasn't like genuinely me, mm -hmm. but I had fun. I went to the national pageant, which was in or Orlando that year. And I came to the realization of a few things. Um, it. I thought it was going to just be a safe space because I grew up with just a lot of girls not liking me. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. And, um, you know, you see these weird little memes now where people are like, if, they, if you don't have a lot of girlfriends and they didn't like you, it's you. It's like, no, I mean, it is me, but it's not because I'm doing something wrong. It's because um, sometimes when you're doing well, it makes people see their, their where they lack and they don't know how to handle it and they just don't <laughs> like <clears throat> so mm -hmm. um and i got into the pageantry world i'm like i can talk about my accomplish accomplishments without feeling shame because i had grew yes. i've grown up feeling such shame like i remember hiding my grades we would get these big paper report cards when i was in like mm -hmm. middle school and i remember people showing their grades and I'm, my grades are way better so i just hit them because i didn't want to feel on the outside so now my like, pageantry is a safe space i can share my accolades and my accomplishments and nobody's like oh she bragging or she thinks she all that and mm -hmm. all that stuff so um i i met some of the girls on social media from the different states and then i get to the pageant and i'm like oh they not all, all of them wasn't as nice as i thought they should be i just thought you know mm -hmm. i just i remember just having bad experiences with some of them and I asked one girl, like, why did you not talk to me? Because I'm grown and I want to know. Why did you not talk to me the entire time? Like, you friended me on social media and now you're not talking to me to the last day and we get ready to leave. And her response was, oh, I was super, I was like really focused and I thought you were my competition. So I didn't want to like mix it. And I was like, really? Because like how I am right now is how I am. So I was just like, wow. Um, yeah, and but I, is cut through. It is cut through. <laughs> Jeez. But I enjoyed myself and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try a different pageant mm -hmm. because now I've learned that there's all these different pageants and you don't have to be perfect to be in a pageant. You can be single, you can have kids, you can be married. There's so many different options. So I was like, okay, so I did another pageant um, in 2018. I was Miss 
Ms. Royalty was constant, 20, 2018 Ms. Royalty was constant. And the problem with that pageant, not saying the pageant was great, but the problem was I I was gonna move. <laughs> And, and y'all know moving is ghetto, y'all. It's the most ghetto <laughs> adult thing that you do. Swear. And um, I was not, I didn't really have time to really prep. And I, I, I was like, I had some um, bra braids. I had, they weren't, they were not knotless because you know, knotless is in now, but that's not what it was. I had like some medium size box braids. And you had your Janet Jackson like, braids. Go. Yes. <laughs> I was like, this is what they're going to get for this one. I got first runner up, but I was like, oh, that's cool. And I, I, for that particular pageant, it was in Milwaukee and it was downtown. And I was like, what's crazy is we can live in Milwaukee and there's all these things happening around us and there's people who don't have opportunity to go. So what I did is I paid for a group of girls that live in the inner city to come and just watch because like you were saying before, representation matters so much. And if you just see somebody now, that's just a seed planted and they could come and be like, oh my gosh, I could be a queen. And I can be from the hood, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. first and Hadley, um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Second Dorf Avenue, and and still be in a pageant. So, mm -hmm. um, that was 2018. Now 2019, because uh, I you get addicted a little bit. You're like, okay, I'm gonna do a pageant. So the International Ms. Pageant is what I entered then, and they have with pageantry, you can do like a state. Uh, uh, some states have competitions where the winner of that state goes on to nationals and then some pageants have like they they um I'm trying to think of the word they you become a delegate like you have to apply and go through the process but then if it's nobody else you you'll go on and you represent your state so I applied for the process and I was accepted for Wisconsin in 2019. 2019 um I when we moving in, we've moved a lot, y'all. <laughs> so much. But it was a lot going on. And I had started my doctorate's program. And mm -hmm. I never had an intention on getting my doctorates. But you know, eight years later, here I am again. Like, here I am, sign me up for more student loans. Cause mm -hmm. I need to get my doctorates. And it's because I'm like, okay, I know I'm gonna do something that's not necessarily at the bedside. And I need my doctorates. It gives you just power in certain positions when you're trying to get into these leadership positions. Because after working in healthcare for a while, you learn the politics, you learn the hustle, and you learn like, okay, credentials matter and who you know matter. So I'm about to just give it all to them and they, they, I'm qualified. So that was my mission. So I went to the pageant, it was in New York. And my husband, he was not my husband at the time, he was my fiance, because um, I had that him. One day we should talk about how I met my husband. But um, well, listen, we'll DM you about a new episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you know, because now when I watch Issa, they make me think about, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, you do your little rotation in these. Yeah. <laughs> and your husband come. <laughs> listen, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> but we um so 2019 I go to New York competing this pageant and this pageant is different than all the pageants that I competed in so the very first pageant the second pageant it goes from like kids through adults and oh. you have to think about like when it's an event type um like some type of event planning now you're planning events for people throughout the age age spectrum and I go to so this pageant is super grown I was like, oh, we can have, um, we had a cocktail hour. They wouldn't have that at the other pageants I was at because, you know, you got kids and you can't, and it's, you know, they don't really, I guess when you're grown, grown, I don't know. I just like that it was grown. So I feel like it was grown. <laughs> Everybody had, um, they were all professionals, like women's, they were, the, the women were dentists, lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, they're all accomplished and they're from all over the country. And some people were from, other countries and I'm like oh this is a real chill vibe so I go on I compete I have fun I'm trying to do my homework because I have papers due and um, didn't time that well but I go and I make top 10 wow. now this pageant I remember asking like trying to ask for help because there's pageant coaches and when you when you're doing a pageant you need to be able to speak a certain way and answer questions a certain way. And that's the area that I needed the most help in. Like, cause I can walk in some heels, my feet may hurt, but I can do it and look good. I dress the part, I can look the part, but I wanted to be able to, you know, mm -hmm. concisely relay how I'm qualified for this position. So that's where I needed to practice. And that, um, 
and I'm a big believer in divine timing. So it was not my time to win. I did make top 10, but I didn't even feel bad. Like I wasn't like, oh, the person who won didn't deserve to win. I should have won versus when I very, very, very first competed. I'm crying on Facebook Live. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't win, y'all. <laughs> I had to set in my heart that I would, I went, I'm like, I'm about to win this. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much more than what I, what I know. Mm-hmm. So at the time in 2019, when I competed, while I didn't win, I just kind of like went to a drawing board and things that I did that I was like, I, I look back and I'm like, okay, was this completely me? Is this what I want people to see? Like if I'm put in this position, I believe like there's certain positions that you have where you have a responsibility, you have impact, influence, and what is it that you're trying to, related to the people and at the time it wasn't it wasn't bad it just wasn't the best time and I was like I'm not gonna give me a sew in anymore I'm just because it man it's some maintenance getting your hair done um I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on wardrobe because I look good in what I wear and I'm not wearing I don't want to wear white now I competed for the 2021 pageant in international miss. I came back. I had no clue that that is something that I would do because I'm like, who come back? Who comes back to the pageant? If you didn't win, you didn't win. But mm-hmm. the girls that I competed with or women that I competed with, they were super cool, relatable. Like we have a, a whole WhatsApp chat and you know, we went through the pandemic together. We are in mm-hmm. part of each other's lives. So um, I felt like it was okay to come back. And with 2020 going on, if y'all not familiar with pad- pageantry is uber conservative in some parts and people have thoughts and beliefs that do not align with mine. And when 2020 with, you know, George Floyd and um, Ahmaud Arbery, everything was going on and then the election, people were showing their colors that mm-hmm. I was Facebook friends with. And I had to unfriend them for my own mental health. And I really questioned if I wanted to participate in pageantry because I'm like, there's no mm-hmm. space for me because I'm definitely a black woman who loves being black and I have faced some racism I mean I can think of racism even this year where where it doesn't matter what degree you have where you're located it does exist and I don't agree with you know with people who have the views that try to make it seem like to try to gaslight me into Mm -hmm. thinking that it's not a real issue and I really thought like (laughs) okay what what I can't do it I don't think I can do it. I can't do it because if I can't be who I'm going can't be me it's not going to work and I'm not going to waste my money and time <laughs> if I can't if I can't be me or be accepted as me in this space and it's crazy now because now what's coming back is I was reading Esther last night and you know like well if you were made for this time you know so this plan that I have for the pageant now my husband he's like you just be spending money <laughs> spending, his, spending his money I'm like I'm oh, sorry but uh I was like I feel like I'm gonna win this time I feel like I'm gonna win but I had the whole plan the, I had plan. plan the plan was all right this COVID body is the body y'all gonna get because when I look at my old pageant pictures I was super skinny the very very first time I competed and um I don't ever want to be that skinny again because remember I wanted to be thick and God said maybe not then but here you are now in your 30s here's your thickness do with it Whatever you come to. Okay, this is what I give you. This is what I yeah. give you. So, um, I you know, I was like, I'm not gonna go super crazy in the gym because I just didn't have the time. I mean, I'm working, it's still a pandemic. Um, I gotta keep my mental together and I was still finishing up school last year. So well, up until June is when I graduated this year. So I um I said, okay, what do I want to do to my hair? Because when you are at a pageant, you like you you're wearing heels, you, you got the look and you, you got the look the certain part and you are put together. I don't got time to be doing my hair because some things may be early and you need to get your face done or do your makeup and I got to pick where to sleep. Sleep has to happen somewhere in that equation. So I said, I'm going to get some braids because I like my braids and sometimes I wear braids and this is going to be easy. I don't have to worry about hair. They were going to get all of this this is this is my message for all i'm like oh you're about to get all of this whatever jackie has this is this is how i'm coming so i said i'm coming how i want to and i was like okay what is my my mission and platform i was like okay what i've been doing i'm always going to speak out for for our people i'm mm-hmm. going to advocate for our people i'm going to give give organizations ideas like how can we <laughs> diversify healthcare? and i was like okay so representation matters bam mm-hmm. i got everything and everything felt good and felt real so when i went to go and compete um, I was just like, I'm be myself. And you know, that that's, and if they don't like it, it's cool. I still felt good and I felt awesome. And then God said, you get the win and I won. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Yes, congratulations. Yes. So, so a few things. So it's first of all, it is amazing that you tried mm-hmm. pageantry, right? Because you could have just been like, no, we don't we don't do that. Yeah, right? we don't do we that are from the ghetto. We don't right. yes. do <laughs> pageant stuff, right? Because there are a lot of pageants and cotillions and things like that that say you must be unwed. You mm-hmm. must not have given birth. You must like they have all these like sort of like purity clauses that are written within the requirements. And that, I think that's just so old. It's old. It's an old way of thinking because we have to think with the times. And when we're talking about women and empowering women women are they're doing everything we're like the chief operating officers of our homes we're moms we are business owners so who are we to say like you're only a good woman or a qualified woman or you're only going to be um impactful on somebody else's life if you don't have these things and so that's that's one of the things i want people to know like you do not have to be perfect you do not have to have it all together because look, listen, even without the pageant, I was impacting lives and I was influencing others and mentoring people. And this just puts it on a different scale. But we can't say that we in pageantry are really, we really want to be inclusive and diverse and show representation when we never do that. Right. So you have to force it onto them. And somebody has to be the one. I, I like to consider myself as a, a disruptor. So I like to mm-hmm. go into systems and be like, oh, this is your norm. Let's shake that up. Let's see how we can fix this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, but mm-hmm. but that but it is amazing that you even tried it because a lot of times we just kind of stick to what we know yeah. and we don't try things, which is why um, it it is great to have exposure because, like I said, that was my first time ever even understanding what a position assistant was, and I got to see a black one. Like that was like dope. Like you get to learn something new, and the person happens to be black, and she's a bad bee. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? Look at God. But um, but the other part is is that you were able to find your tribe. So mm-hmm. you trying this new thing, right? You found a group of women who are not intimidated by your accolades and accomplishments, right? They don't do the nice nasty, right? She thinks she. Well, some of them did. <laughs> some, some of them. Did. Some of them tried, but that wasn't the majority of my experience. So for me, that was that. I think that was real important because that that's something that I remember people telling me, like, you don't talk about your story, and it's because I've had so many bad experiences mm-hmm. where people mm-hmm. they receive it as you're just bragging. It's like, I'm, is it bragging if I'm telling you what's actually true and what I've really done? It like that's not what that's not what it is. So I, I, I that was important to me. Yeah. Which absolutely. is also why I became a Zeta Phi Beta Sorority. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but it's definitely not bragging as well. Like, why can't we highlight our accomplishments, especially when it comes from a place of empowerment and uplifting? Mm-hmm. Like, I want to show you where I came from and what I've accomplished so I can help the next little girl watching me see that it's possible. You can do this. You can do whatever you put your mind to because I'm living proof of that. Um, and I think we have to change that and that's where we have to change the narrative because I don't know where that came from where it was seen it 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 came off like it's bad if somebody I I don't know what that is I don't know where that came mm -hmm. from but that's definitely the message like okay so because we really all it takes is for us to see just one person and if you have somebody that's like real life like within arm's reach and you're like wait a minute you know my neighborhood and Mm -hmm. you're like you're a girl I know your neighborhood (laughs) <laughs> you know um, and, and not that, only that but if you don't then a lot of people will never know yeah right like you know what I'm saying because even just with you sharing your story now I'm like I met you mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I know it you know what I mean like you can make those <laughs> those connections but sometimes we are in the room and we are surrounded by people who could help us but we don't know who they are we can't identify them right so how do we ask for help if we don't know how mm-hmm. and the fact that you grew up um, not being able to have a group of solid um, girlfriends it is amazing that you tried this new things and you this new thing you were able to find your tribe uh amongst another tribe <laughs> <laughs> another tribe that another is tribe. funny yeah that <laughs> is really interesting that you know growing up and not having girlfriends like that that you would go into something like pageantry that's very girly and very and very like I don't know because you know like I'm like, yeah, I don't know much just, about pageantry except like yeah. Miss Congeniality and like that's my only frame of reference. And not, and not only that, but you know, every time when you see even episodes where they talk about pageantry, like think about even Family Matters, like it always, it's always 
very competitive. It's always it very smile in your face, wear my pearls. Let's stab you in the back. But the second you turn around, uh-huh. I'm going to do, have a wardrobe malfunction for you, or I'm going to like plants. I'm going to learn something about you, use it against you in the pageant just so that I can win. Yeah. But, but you, you know what? Do Miss Black and Gold too in college. Girl, I did Miss Black and Gold yeah. too. Hey, yeah. I didn't know, girl. It's I didn't, okay. I didn't, I didn't. But, did and you, I think that's you the probably thing. Like those stereotypes do exist, but it's very, very, very small. Like there are those people, but they, it's so much more positivity. So Mm -hmm. if I was telling somebody else who never did a pageant, who's like my age, and it's like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, first of all, you can. Secondly, if you look good and you feel good about yourself, there you go. Um, But what, what would you expect? Like a pageant weekend, I went there, we flew on a Thursday, I flew in on a Thursday night and they had some like scheduled events each day that were optional. The competition was um, required. I think it was a gala that was required, but you get, you get to get dressed up and you, and it's what you make of it. So I'm a people person. I like to talk to strangers about weird not weird things but I just like if I'm in a crowd I'm I'm going to work the room so I, it works for me and I'm going to introduce myself to people and if we vibe we vibe if we don't like I always make a pageant best friend when I'm at a pageant though so even though I get a little bit of shade at that very first one like I met some girls that like I'm, I'm hanging with them the entire weekend we, we gonna link up and we're going to do everything together and keep each other on, you know, on their toes about how the schedule's going. And it's not really, it's more of a competition for yourself. Yeah. And I think maybe that's the way that I go into it because if you're competing with me, I mean, that, that does nothing for you. Like what, you can't be me. You don't live my life. You don't, you're not meant to even impact the people that I'm supposed to impact. So why would you compete with me? You just need to make sure you're leveling yourself up and that you can confidently deliver that. So my big message was, hey, I want to highlight the importance of representation, diversity, and inclusion pretty much everywhere, but healthcare is my specialty. Um, and I want to represent the women of today. So the women of today are versatile. We do not, you can't put us in a box. You can try, but we, um, we're we real. Um, we don't have perfect lives and we need to not, I think we just need to get away from trying to make people think they need to be perfect. Like everybody, Mm -hmm. that's just, no, that's not, nobody's perfect for one. And we need to stop trying to sell that message. And beauty doesn't just look like, beauty may have a booty and I got a little bit of booty. So, you know. (laughs) I love it. I'm afraid for it. You earned it. Listen. And you you gave braids too, braids and booty. But um, and the, the other thing that I wanted to say is, you know, thankfully your mom was like, she kind of took that weight of shame yeah. off of you. And I'm, it, it just kind of makes me wonder, you know, because parents react all kinds of different ways, child, when, 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 when they kids get pregnant, whether they uh, 16, 17, 20, 25, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it helped so- me. I would say it did help me, like I said, like, because that, that shame, but I think I still carried some of that shame until maybe maybe later in my 30s I mean Mm -hmm. I'm still in my late 30s but you know like in my 30s during that discovery phase of like okay what I like who am I what's okay because you know I had a lot of accomplishments and you're like well this doesn't match Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't Mm -hmm. have this if I didn't have that so I had to like let go of like all right there's there's people profiting off of being teen moms and I didn't cut me a check MTV cut me a check but Mm -hmm. um you know, and then, and they're not keeping it real with people. And then um, when you just know the odds, like I, I, I took time as time to like figure out what what are the odds of me being here? You know, we, we are all miraculously here, divinely here, but less than 40% of teen moms will graduate high school. Less than 2% of teen moms are going to get a college degree by the time they're 30. Like that's a degree. That's not saying, uh, you know, uh, a graduate degree. That's any type of degree. And that's less than 2%. And I'm on the other side of all those odds. And I've just never been of the belief that God was just like, I'm gonna pull you through. Bam, that's it. Like, I feel like I was supposed to be in these positions and I have a responsibility to show the people the way. Like, okay, you know what? You are not stuck. Yes, your environment looks like this. People are telling you the opposite of where you see yourself or what you believe but you're not stuck. Mm-hmm. And I know because I was there. 
Right. And mm-hmm. and I think that that's what people need to see more of. We need to have grace with ourselves. And I had to learn to have grace with myself and be like, okay, there's no no need to be, especially when my mama was like, okay, I'm not disappointed. Now I'm like, okay, I don't need to walk with my head down. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, y'all can't tell me, nobody nobody who's a hater could tell me anything right now. I'm just letting them know. I mean, like I was on Good Morning America. I'm one step closer to Beyonce. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about Okay, per, 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 per. yes, you were a good born in America. I'm just saying. You, you won't you. give up, look. So you've given up Destiny's Child, but you but, moved over to Beyonce. Hey, okay, I listen, see where this is going. Still <laughs> mogul status in the making. I'm just saying. I, I would like to be known as the Beyonce of PAs. Out okay, here. <laughs> look, I ain't there mad you at go. you. Okay, we are not mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, keep that's on amazing. Going. Oh my gosh, oh, an amazing, amazing story. We definitely have to have you back on because I would love to hear your love story with your husband and navigating a blended family because that's always something I'm interested that is, that's, in. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. bl- I'm blessed in that, on that end too. I'm. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, I'm super, <laughs> super. I am super grateful with for my life because I'm because you got know, think about it too. Like I, when I was single and I have three kids and if you look at that the way society act now well, she got three kids um, like Kevin Samuels <laughs> listen <laughs> Kevin Samuels said. I you know what there's a whole group I guess he had on Facebook and I don't know how I was in that group I don't know if like I don't know I was like let me get up out this group because y'all men hate yourselves and um there's mm. nothing they say is true so like that's I probably just need to go on a whole opposite diatribe about like hey let me show y'all how I was a mom of three and got me a husband. Got my I mean, husband. I had a baby the first. I had a baby the first time and had a husband too. So like all that stuff is just lies. It's lies. Don't mean it's nothing. Just, yeah, I had accurate. two babies. Let's just had another. That's a little razzle dazzle, right. you know. <laughs> just to I am a high, theory. a high value woman. That, that, that is weather, funny. Weather, Dude, weather, just just to double check agree. the theory, I had <laughs> twins. <laughs> And then got, then got a, look, was a divorcee and then got another listen. that is funny that right the there, math, the math just doesn't add up it right. doesn't oh, add up and i was over 30 listen <laughs> the math was math is kevin samuels because uh what you saying what you two, saying? Plus, two plus four and four plus four is eight <laughs> what, what's this listen kevin what's yeah. this that is Ooh. hilarious oh my god i know i don't i i I would never go down that route though with them because you know that's just you're just asking for stuff there but I just look at it like mm, mm, mm. they don't know they don't yeah. even know don't and know. I don't want women to listen to that saying like oh I'm just because we have so oh my gosh when you just know your worth and you know your value and you know that you are here with purpose no matter what everybody else on the outside says you're that's unstoppable it. and that's what they need to hear and that's how you get that your that's how you attract your husband to you be like I'm unstoppable. He'd be like, you are, and you fine. And I'm like, yeah. No. <laughs> and you know it. Okay. And you know it. I love it. I love how you brought it back. Yeah. So I think final question we always like to ask is, what do you believe your purpose is? Oh God. All right. So I believe that my purpose is to definitely impact as many lives as possible by showing people the way. Um, whether it's the way of overcoming like a poverty type mindset or overcoming a bad environment, overcoming horrible relationships, overcoming um, just the odds and the statistics that society puts against you. Like those numbers don't mean anything. They only have value if you add on to it. So if you go in the opposite direction, you're discrediting all that stuff. So I think my purpose is just to like, definitely leave my mark. I'm gonna have receipts when I, um, when I leave. Mm. And that you have done, you have certainly left your mark. Indeed. You have certainly left your mark. So let's do our to-go box. Okay. What are we going to take home with us? So I'll start with you, Bestie. What goes oh in your to-go gosh. box? Oh my gosh, so much for Jackie. Wow. Like you just, I mean, again, really dope story. We didn't even get into you, the book that you wrote. You're an author too. There's a book? There's, a, there's so yeah. much about Jackie. Like I just be following her on Instagram. Like, oh my <laughs> God, like that like just an, an amazing human being um but I'm definitely taking away um the unstoppable like there's nothing that can stop me not environment not past relationships um and not even to allow myself to stop myself like just go out and do it um so I think that's the the theme that I'm I'm alone with tonight that's good 
Jagged, 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 jag
yeah, and that you're is. beautiful. It, I think it's, it's quick. It's a quick read. It's well, I mean, guess my who kids. has four nieces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Messages Listen. to our daughters. The link is in my bio on my Instagram. Okay. okay. Uh-huh. Yes. No, that's awesome. together. Listen, we, we, yeah, we do a, a lot of <laughs> just wavelength. It's a, yes. Uh, togetherness for all these years but But, I definitely you want to you want to live when you see like when my mom died when she was younger she always talked about going on a cruise to Alaska so I was born in Alaska they were in the military I know I look look so look (laughs) what are you doing next Monday it's gonna be a part two three four we gonna have you on every Monday until we get this whole story together but I I don't understand Jackie But I think that that's one of the things that I, I that I love with, from her was like she had gave up all this stuff for us and struggled and she mm-hmm. did go on to get her an associate's degree but it was like after we were grown and she never did anything to that was for her or to enjoy herself and she always talked about this cruise that she never went on so I told mm-hmm. myself I am not that's not me I'm going to do everything that I want to do while I can and you know yes. cancel, cancel these student loans because like i don't know when i die they're gonna hey, be gone, right? the Lord has forgiven them okay hey, listen it's if above us it ain't got nothing to do with me i received he forgave me he forgave them loans <laughs> listen he, 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 he died for all of our sins and all he, of our sins. he died for them too long i don't know about our sins but he died for them too long <laughs> that's okay. the biggest sin of it all why are you trying to be <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we just we got to collectively be in in sync with this, and you know the devil's a lie. These loans hey. gonna be forget. They're forgiven. Forget hey. All of them, from the rooter <laughs> to the tooth. Okay. I forgot them already. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how I feel too. That's how I feel too. No, but. <laughs> But I really appreciate y'all having me on. I will definitely be back on because yes. I mean I do. I have like a a lot of lives that I've lived in my thirty eight years. I feel. Yeah, you I, are I feel like there are definitely the some... master P of Milwaukee. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a, a lot of. I'm a, like... That's gonna be my next caption, Chantel. Let me think what picture I'm about to put up. I'm right. like on the master P of Milwaukee. <laughs> there's so many like mini stories that we got that we need to like focus on you know each one and yes. kind of dive down break them down yes so you'll be hearing from us you may yes. just get All an right. invitation okay we <laughs> might not even ask we just gonna put it on your calendar like that okay, you know. we need to get this other part here we need to figure out this gap right there we go <laughs> but thanks for tuning in to burns with Bessie's podcast until next time peace, peace.